Welcome to Fistology with Shakti and in today's episode we are going to do with lung volumes. We are going to do with the static lung volumes followed by your dynamic lung volumes. So when you talk about lung volumes, the static lung volume, uh, it is measured using something called a spirometry. So this procedure, you would have done it in practicals in physiology. So through spirometry, you measure these lung volumes. What is expired and what is inspired. So volume that is expired into this object instrument is measured or the volume is inspired and that change is measured. So amount of volume that is expired into it, amount of volume that is inspired from it is detected and based on that the volume is recorded that is how spirometry works in a nutshell so when we are going to understand these lung volumes i want you to understand from a physiological point of view you have to breathe along with me and think about everything because you don't have to have this diagram in your head every time you just have to do it to yourself and it is going to come out normally so normally when we respire the tidal ventilation, the eupneic breathing, so that tidal ventilation, there is a normal breathing. So that is your tidal volume. So what about the tidal volume? Let us inspire and expire normally. So if this is a marker, you are inspiring this much of air normally, you are expiring this much of air. Inspiring, expiring. So that is what is happening. So. So that is your tidal ventilation. So let's take a point over here. You are inspiring from here and taking in a certain amount of volume and that is followed by expiration. Again you are inspiring normally and you are expiring normally. So this is your tidal ventilation. So this volume that comes under this, so when you normally inspire and then you expire. So when there is a spirograph, that's uh, when we do the spirometric procedure, you usually open your nostril, breathe normally with that and close your nostril and expire normally. So when you expire normally, that amount of air that has been expired. So this is your inspiratory volume, this much volume is taken in and that much amount of volume is now expired. So this is inspiration, this is expiration and when you inspire around tidal volume is taken. You expire equally that amount of tidal volume is expired out. So that is expired out into your instrument which is now going to record that much of volume. So what happened? This is your tidal volume. So that is your tidal volume. Usually it comes to uh, 350 to 500 ml. Right? So 0.35 to 0.5 liter. So that is your tidal volume. But we know that apart from this we can inspire this much. Apart from normal tidal ventilation you can expire this much. So in excess of the tidal volume. So there are two words that you need to know. A volume and capacity. You'll come across two different terms when we talk about the static lung volumes. There is a volume, especially a reserve volume and a capacity. So in excess of tidal volume, how much can be inspired? So you are Inspiring normally, expiring normally, inspiring normally, expiring normally, inspiring normally and in excess of that normal inspiration, how much more can you inspire? So inspire normally and then that is your inspirator reserve. So in reserve of the tidal volume that is normally happening, you can inspire this much more. So from this point, you are inspiring normally. This is your tidal volume. In the serve of the tidal volume, how much more can you inspire? You inspire this much extra. 
So this extra that is in reserve of your tidal volume that is what is called inspiratory reserve volume. This is the reserve volume because the tidal volume in excess of the tidal volume how much can you inspire that is inspiratory reserve volume. So that normally comes to around 2.6 to 3.3 liters. So we got 0.5 liter of tidal volume that can be inspired. On top of that, you can maximally put an effort and in excess of that, you can inspire 2.6 to 3.3 liter. That is the inspirator reserve volume. Now I had mentioned about something called a capacity. So this total component is what is called the capacity. So from this point, the maximum capacity for inspiration is yes. So from this point, including the tidal volume and the inspiratory reserve volume, this is the maximum amount to which he can inspire. That is his inspiratory capacity, the capacity for that person to maximally inspire. So from the point of expiration, He was able to inspire this much. So that is your inspiratory capacity. From the point of end of normal inspiration, tidal inspiration, how much he can inspire is your inspiratory reserve volume. Reserve. I hope that is clear. It's fairly simple. Now from this point he's expired. And again we'll take the tidal ventilation. And then we expire again. Now in a similar fashion, even when we expire, this is a normal amount that we have expired. So, now in excess of this, you can expire a lot more. That reserve that you can expire out, that reserve of volume that you can expire out is called your expiratory reserve volume. It's that simple. So this is your tidal volume. In excess of tidal volume, the volume that can be expired out, that is your expiratory reserve volume. Now you tell me what is the expiratory capacity, the total amount that can be expired. So that is your tidal volume plus your expiratory reserve volume. This makes up your expiratory capacity. So this is your inspiratory capacity. This is your expiratory capacity. So from here, let's go back here and we're going to inspire normally, expire normally. So we got the tidal volume, we got the inspiratory reserve volume, we got the inspiratory capacity, we got the expiratory reserve volume, we got the expiratory capacity. So when you talk about expiratory reserve volume, that usually comes to 1 to 1.2 liter. Another thing you need to note right now, when you talk about inspiratory reserve volume, we had 2.6 to 3.3 liter. When we talked about expiratory reserve volume, that was 1 to 1 1.2 liter. So that means inspiratory capacity the amount you can inspire is much more amount the volume that you can inspire is much more we have greater capacity for the inspiratory volume compared to how much you can expire out why is that because when we expire you know that initially there's a peak in the flow rate of expiration after which it slows down so initially a lot of air goes down after which the whole process slows down you cannot expire that fast and another reason is that there's something called a closing capacity. So you don't want all the air to go out. Once it goes out, it collapses the alveoli. You don't want that. So to prevent that, there is always some volume that is remaining in the lung. There is an amount of volume that is remaining in the lung. So that volume which is remaining in the lung is your residual volume. So even if you maximally expire, there is a volume which is remaining here. So that volume 
that is remaining in spite of maximum expiration that is your residual volume so that is the amount of volume that is remaining inside in spite of maximally expiring so we got the expiratory reserve volume and we got the residual volume now what about when we normally inspire and expire when we normally inspire and expire at the end of tidal ventilation even then there is amount of air that is always staying inside so consider normal ventilation at the end of normal expiration you have this much amount of volume that is remaining so this is what is called a functional residual capacity so it's simple again this is a capacity so in excess of something the volume that is present so here unlike earlier we had used tidal volume and in excess of tidal volume uh, we took the irv and that together form the inspiratory capacity so just similar to that this is the residual volume so normally at maximum expiration this is the volume that will remain so in excess of that volume how much can be there so that expir expired air is a expiratory uh, reserve volume so this together is your total capacity how much excess of the rv the residual volume can be kept inside normally at the end of tidal ventilation so that is your f r c so this is your functional residual capacity so when we maximally expire the amount of air that is present inside is your residual volume at the end of normal respiration tidal ventilation right so when you expire tidally so that tidal expiration at the end of that the amount of lung that is the amount of volume that is remaining in the lung is the functional residual capacity uh, this residual volume comes to uh, 1 to 1.2 liter again so erv was 1 to 1.2 liter residual volume was 1 to 1.2 liter so add them together that is the frc i'll come to uh, 2 to 2.2 2 and one so that is fairly simple all you have to remember actually is the volume of irv this is 350 to 500 ml this is 1 to 1.2 this is 1 to 1.2 add together that that will be frc and this is 2.6 to 3.3 that is the only thing you have to remember and then add everything else you can get the capacities that are needed are we clear here yes so this is all the basic lung volumes apart from that we got something called the vital capacity so we are going to inspire expire again normally we're going to inspire again normally we're going to expire again normally and we are going to ask the person to inspire maximally so we got the tidal volume which is coming inside so we already have the functional residual capacity here and on top of that we are taking in a tidal volume and we are taking in the inspiratory reserve volume now at this point when all this volume is present inside the lung so we got the residual volume we got the expiratory reserve volume which is present we got the tidal volume and we got the inspiratory reserve volume so in other words we go the whole of frc and whole of inspiratory capacity which is present inside your lungs right now now we picture those blow into that instrument so all the volume is going to get recorded so you are expiring it out expiring it out will it go till here no this is the amount of volume that is always going to be there in spite of maximum expiratory effort so right now we have measured this volume, this volume, and this volume. So what did we measure? Inspiratory reserve volume, tidal volume, and your expiratory reserve volume together. So this is what is called your vital capacity. So that comes to 3.2 to 4.8 liter. So that is your vital capacity. And at the end of that, you still have residual volume remaining. So what did we understand from this? Tidal volume can be measured. You expire it out, you can measure it. Inspiratory reserve volume.
can be measured. You take a known amount of uh, volume inside that instrument and then you breathe in. So based on that change, you can measure this. Now again, you can expire forcefully and see how much volume is coming. That is expiratory reserve volume. And we just saw how you can inspire maximally and expire maximally. And that volume that you record is your vital capacity. But is there any way to record your residual volume through this method? So through uh, spirometry, you cannot exactly measure the residual volume because even after forced expiration, that volume which is there inside the lung cannot be measured outside. So residual volume cannot be measured by this method. Can you measure FRC? You, you can measure ERV se separately. But without residual volume, you can't measure FRC. At the end of tidal ventilation, you cannot know how much volume of air is present inside the lung. It cannot be measured outside on the spirometry. So that is another thing that cannot be measured using this. So we got the residual volume and we got the functional residual capacity. And these two things cannot be measured. And another thing that is needed is your total lung capacity. So this energy capacity plus your residual volume. So this is the total amount of volume inside the lung. So this is the total lung capacity. Can you measure that? Without residual volume, you cannot measure that. So that is the third thing that cannot be measured using this method. So we got the residual volume, we got the functional residual capacity, we got the total lung capacity. So this is a question that can come. Which are the volumes that cannot be measured using spirometry? So we got the residual volume, we got the functional residual capacity, we got the total lung capacity. It's simple. So these are amount that are there inside the lung which cannot be measured outside. your components that cannot be measured. Now let's come to few things like the FRZ and vital capacity. What do they mean? These are fairly simple. Tile volume is the amount that we normally inspire expire. This is the reserve, this is the reserve of expiration and inspiration and that is the total capacity of inspiration and expiration. But what about residual volume? What about functional residual capacity? What about vital capacity? What is the significance? What is the importance? And why are we measuring them? Why right? are they actually needed here? So when we talk about uh, maximum expiratory effort, at the end of maximum expiration, certain amount of volume should be there. That is your residual volume. So it is important to know how much of residual volume is remaining. Okay? And there is something called functional residual capacity over here. What does it imply? At the end of normal expiration, normal tidal expiration, amount of functional residual capacity is there. And the maximum that can go is residual volume. So this area over here is acting like a buffer zone. So this total functional residual capacity is your buffer zone. And this area is a maximum limit. So to keep that, your functional residual capacity is there to act as a buffer. If you need a little more, uh, if you need to expire a little more, it can expire. If you need to expire a little more, it can expire it out without affecting the residual volume. So it always functional residual capacity acts as a buffer to make sure that residual volume remains in the lung. And if it is needed, based on that, expiratory efforts can take a little up of the functional residual capacity. Like this a bit. Okay, so that is the importance of understanding functional residual capacity. So if uh, the person has uh, lesser functional residual capacity, that means he'll go into residual volume faster. So to understand things like that is the importance of functional residual capacity. So that is a buffer, right? This volume is a buffer of volume that is present for expiration. Now what about vital capacity? Now we had seen how we inspire maximally and then we expire it all completely. So that is the vital capacity that is synonymous to strength of your respiratory muscles. How much it can hold. 
So if there is some restrictive disease or some problem like that, you cannot inspire everything and keep it. And you'll have trouble keeping it like that. So in cases like that, that is important. Even things like posture, right? You look at uh, male, female, the people with broader shoulders, things like that. You'll see that people with broader shoulders, better respiratory uh, muscle activity, athletes, all of them have better vital capacity, higher vital capacity compared to the other people. So that is the importance of vital capacity. It is uh, synonymous to the muscular activity. It is synonymous to the strength of your respiratory muscles. So that is your vital capacity. So you need to know the volume of all these and you need to understand which is recorded using spirometry and which cannot be recorded using this method. So these are basic questions that will be asked and you need to understand which is which and the next thing is what is the role of vital capacity, what is the role of functional residual capacity. So these are all the questions that can be asked from this. Now when we are talking about uh, functional residual capacity, so along with that I am going to mention a few other volumes and capacities that there are in water. One is something called the minimal air, another concept is your critical closing volume and closing capacity. So again, some volume is there and the capacity is there. So, I mentioned already that residual volume is 1 to 1.2 liter. So in a person, intact human being, at the end of maximum expiration, residual volume will be remaining. Now, from a forensic point of view, you take the lungs out, put it in water, squeeze it and take it out. The amount of air that is still remaining at the end of all that, that is your minimal air. So that minimal air, that is your minimal air. So this minimal air is supposed to be 10% of your total lung capacity. So this minimal air is 10% so that normally comes to your tidal volume. So this was 1 to 1.2 and this will come to around 500, 500 milliliter. So that is the minimal air. What is the importance of this For from a forensic point of view? If a child had taken its first breath, that means the child has taken the first breath and after that the child died. That means that minimal air will be there. But if the child was still born, and died before taking the first breath, then that minimal air will not be present. So that's the one uh, importance when we talk about with respect to forensics. Next is your critical volume and critical closing capacity. So this is the FRC. This is the residual volume. Now last time in the previous episode, I mentioned about the equal pressure points and how the uh, airway tract collapses, not the alveoli, the airway tract collapses slightly during expiration. So that is the importance of something called the critical closing capacity, the cl cl closing volume. So what is the importance of that? This is a residual volume where minimum amount is remaining. And this is the buffer. So some at some point from here, when it's moving towards residual volume, at some point it is going to start closing. So we are seeing the lungs and air is coming out from this and the pleural pressure is there and while forced expiration. So this is a forced expiration, this is not tidal expiration, this is a forced expiration. So during forced expiration, this will be somewhere in the positive zone. So when air is going out, ultimately the pressure here will keep dropping. This is a positive pressure and this pressure is met by this pressure. But once the pressure here starts dropping and the pressure outside is still positive, at one point this will overpower 
the pressure inside and it will start to collapse it. So we had seen how normally it is towards the end or end as in the proximal segment where cartilaginous segments are there so not much collapses it. But in dependent regions so when I'm standing the lower lobes or when I'm lying down posteriorly so these or when I'm going to the side this part so these dependent parts especially will start to collapse so critical closing volume is important when you talk about the dependent areas so in the dependent areas at a particular point this pressure will start dropping such that it starts collapsing in the dependent areas so somewhere between functional residual capacity and residual volume at one volume above uh, residual volume so this is the residual volume so this volume is the residual volume at some volume above the residual volume that is your critical closing volume this is the volume closing volume so volume so uh, students have a confusion when they talk about critical closing capacity and critical closing volume they always get confused so this is one easy way to remember it the volume whenever i talked about residual volume reserve volume it's all volumes so the volume above the residual volume at which it starts closing a dependent areas that is your closing volume so what would be the capacity what is uh, closing capacity the residual volume plus the closing volume so this entire part so it starts closing in the dependent areas over here and the volume above the residual volume is your closing volume and when you take a look at the whole volume that is there inside this is your closing capacity so the residual volume which is there plus the closing volume which is there that forms the closing capacity and this is the point at which independent areas it starts closing down so that is about minimal air that is about closing volume that is about closing capacity and we take a look at all the other static lung volumes so now that this is clear next we'll go to understand dynamic lung volumes oh.